Jamie Bond, this is such a privilege. Today is International Nurses Day and particularly special because it's the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale and we're going to talk about her a little bit more but before we talk about her I'm really interested to know a little bit more about you. Thank you Carol, it's a privilege to be talking with you. Um, my background obviously as a nurse but Ultimately, my career was in government as the chief nurse in Wales, Scotland and England. A great privilege to be part of leading nursing and the nursing profession's contribution to healthcare, but also to impact on health policy for the whole of the UK. Uh, in also, during that time, I was a member of the global, well, the chairman of the global uh, advisory group on nursing for the World Health Organization in Geneva. So worked with chief nurses and governments across the world to impact on, on nursing. But as I've said that, may I also say, this is an amazing day. This is Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday. Happy birthday, Florence. She has been such an amazing person, impacting not just on nursing, but on healthcare. And in this current situation, of course, in the pandemic, we take all her lessons on board. And I know we'll be talking more about that. So, and you're also, I think, now chair of the Florence Nightingale Foundation. <laughs> This, this is an amazing experience for me to have the privilege of being chairman of her foundation. It was set up in her memory and we seek to develop the future Florence Nightingales. And this is tremendous through leadership development, our scholarship programs. And I know, Carol, you are one such person. Uh, so that, that is tremendous. But we also follow in her footsteps using data um, as she did and evidence. So the academic base of all that we are doing uh, is, is being carried forwards and now an influential voice for the nursing profession. So I'm very excited to lead forward the foundation into the future. And today, especially in celebration of her birthday, we are launching a campaign which will focus on her and attach to her favorite perfume, the White Rose. Ah. So Florence Nightingale, White Rose, is, is what today is also going to be about. How fabulous. And this isn't quite how we were expecting to celebrate Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday. We weren't expecting a pandemic. We weren't expecting to be locked down. So it's a rather unusual situation that we find ourselves in. So it'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts about the nurses response to the pandemic and the part that we're now playing in it? It's a very, very sad situation across the world, as you rightly say, a pandemic with no treatment, no possibility of being able to treat people with it until we get the vaccine. It's frightening, worrying, and for nurses, doctors, and clinicians at the bedside caring for such terribly sick people and supporting them, it's been a most harrowing time. Florence, if she was here, with all her experience and knowledge, and impact on infection control would say with personal protective equipment, it, it is being managed really expertly. 
And what it has enabled nurses to do is to step up to the plate. This is a great crisis, great suffering, great sadness, great grief. But nurses are there in the front line delivering compassionate, caring, as well as expert care during this difficult time. She would be enormously proud of how her profession is taking forwards their contribution in this difficult time. I absolutely agree with every word. I think it is it's not what we expected, but what an incredible way to honour her memory and to honour what she did and what she started and to be picking up the lamp, but in a completely different way and in a different context. It is, it is not what we would have wanted, but it is really a time for nurses to be part of this massive healthcare response to look after so many people when they really, really, really need us. But it's very often overlooked, isn't it, that Florence Nightingale was the first public health nurse as well. And COVID-19 is, it really has presented very much a public health emergency, as well as what we see of the secondary care emergency and the hospital based element of it. So what have you been thinking about in that context of Florence Nightingale as the public health nurse? I think this is an amazing opportunity. This year and today especially, we were going to take her lamp and walk it down Westminster Abbey with the cameras of the world upon us as we shone a light on nursing across the world. Everything nursing has done. Sadly, that is not taking place, but nevertheless, we are continuing through our celebrations of International Nurses Day to shine a light on every aspect of nurses and midwives contribution to health and health care. We know well the clinical contribution that nurses make in the care and treatment, rehabilitation of people and families, children, mothers. But the public health role, as you've rightly identified, is very, very often forgotten. Yeah. It is now, but in the future, in my view, going to be incredibly important. Nurses across the world, are key people in their local communities, in their local townships, in their local um, uh, families, but also in the role that they could play in influencing governments. And it is that public health role in the future that I think is going to come to the fore as we seek to equip people with their own abilities to help their independence, but also to support others in their community. So not just about contact tracing, following up, and a marvelous example in the Isle of Wight, I hear today of, of nurses taking that forwards as we will across the UK, but across the world as well, nurses playing that public health role for the future. And that's where we keep people safe, we keep people healthier, we keep families together. We, and the economic impact of that and the well-being impact of that must, it must be immeasurable. Mm. Yes, and also it is the mental health yes. impact as well. But I think one of the things flowing from the pandemic is that, of course, people are very worried, very fearful, very sad in the personal grief that many have had to face, but also the loneliness that people have to face with isolation and the social distancing. 
So the, the mental health perspective, again, nurses will be coming to the fore in helping to meet that challenge and in supporting people. And everything you're talking about there all needs great leadership, doesn't it? So I'm really interested to talk to you a little bit more about nursing, nurses' roles as leaders, maybe in a, the local context, but also the national context. And I know the Florence Nightingale Foundation does an amazing um, job of developing future nurse leaders. So your thoughts on nurses as leaders and influencers? Well, I think through this pandemic and across the UK, nurses have shown amazing leadership. Um, I know the chief nursing officers in the four countries, Charlotte in Northern Ireland, Fiona in Scotland, Jean in Wales, and Ruth May here in England. All four have shown amazing leadership, not just in being part of the strategic team in driving through uh, services and delivery of services through this crisis, but also being alongside ministers and politicians as they help to deliver messages and communications to the public. They have shown absolute excellence of leadership, but also nurses at the front line. The stories I hear, first of all, of nurses reshaping and transforming their healthcare facility locally so that there has been the increase in intensive care, high dependency uh, care and facilities, uh, re-equipping, retraining staff in order to be able to support appropriately intensively ill patients. The leadership in taking forward that quick change, they have shown immense foresight in being able to undertake that and skill in, in undertaking, but also delivering such an outcome. Leaders of the future in nursing are going to be so important at every level. And I'm excited, as I know Florence would be today, because we have them in place and we are continuing to develop them for the future. And she was a remarkable example, Florence Nightingale, wasn't she? Because if you think she changed nursing globally and she did it without all the benefits that we've got of communication, social media. She, she understood what data could do, how to use it, how to lobby at, um, at government level and so on. But she did it without all the tools that we just take for granted now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and we've got to maximise all the tools that we have available to us. But nevertheless, the skill that she had in lobbying, yes. knowing the right people to talk to at the right time, she was adept at walking the corridors of power and influence the right people at the right moment. Again, this is a skill our CNOs have shown it during this pandemic, and I know nurses will continue to show that skill. Visible leadership is just so, so important, isn't it? And do you think, Dame Yvonne, as a result of this pandemic, and nurses are very high profile in the media and so on at the moment, do you think it's going to make any um, difference or change in any way the public's perception of nurses and nursing as a career choice? I'm sure it will. Uh, nurses have shown through this pandemic, I think, four skills and attributes. They have been extremely flexible. They have been immensely resilient they have been very, very courageous. And I think 
This is something that the public have seen as well, courageous. But more importantly than anything, they have shown this tremendous compassion. Now, all of that has demonstrated to the public, but most especially to young people, the skills that we expect and the personal contributions and attributes that we expect in a person to be a nurse. And I believe many young people are believing that could be me. Yeah. And I think we'll be encouraged. I hope they will, because as you know, we will be increasing uh, the number of places in our educational programs across the UK. So we're looking for boys and girls to be encouraged to come into the profession and to make this contribution. And it is an amazing career. You and I have experienced this career. We know how it feels to support a person who is sick, who is vulnerable, who is ill and help them through it. We have also been in leadership positions and been able to shape health policy to support families and individual and healthcare development. You and I know this immensely special role that nurses and midwives have. And I'm sure the exposure that we have had during this pandemic will encourage young people to think about, and older people perhaps as well, to come into our profession. Yes, and it's been very heartening. I, I love the idea of nursing being a second career or a third career or a fourth career for somebody as well as it um, being a lifelong career as it has been for you and for me. But um, so I th I'm really positive and optimistic for that as a legacy of the pandemic and um, the uh, one of the upsides of what's been such a difficult and is um, is such a difficult time. But there's something else that's very, very close to my heart. I'm really interested in your views on, which is the independent sector. So for me, as clinical director and chief nurse at Nuffield Health, working so very closely with the NHS and, and hearing people talk about the NHS family, including the independent sector, is just such a pleasure. And my hope is that that will become part of our legacy and that we are viewed more as we're all part of a healthcare system and we're all supporting um, healthcare. So what are your thoughts on that? I think the future is that we are one family. Whether one works in the NHS, the independent sector, or in the care sector, we are one family contributing to supporting people during an illness or when they, they need other support through mental health problems and so on. Uh, it's one family. I think this experience of working through the pandemic uh, will develop a partnership between the independent sector and the NHS. Neither can do without each other, in my view. And I think it could develop into a very special relationship, each supporting each other, um, each delivering what they are very, very well equipped and able to do, but at the local level and at the national level, the independent sector and the NHS will be, in my view, a partnership yes. in the future and a very special one across the UK. I'm so pleased to hear you hear you say that and that that's what you think. And before I leave legacy altogether, one of my reflections always on your legacy for your time when you were Chief Nursing Officer, Dame Yvonne, was uh, that you introduced the role of the consultant nurse, the nurse consultant, which has stayed with us and has changed the way that nurses can work alongside and as part of the wider clinical team. So 
I'd like to know a little bit more about how you see how that has unfolded as part of your legacy over the years. I think it's been incredibly important that nurses have a clinical career structure. Yes, we need nurses to go into leadership positions outside of the clinical setting, sector into policy and managerial roles, but we need a clinical career structure. And setting that up with clinical nurse specialists and the ultimate clinical role of nurse consultant is very important so that you work as colleagues alongside medical consultant, you have your own clinics, you undertake your own research in developing the body of nursing research to take your profession forwards. All that role particularly, but all roles are very, very important to enable clinical nurses to deliver an increased contribution. So that role and the role that the, the nurse consultant plays within the clinical team uh, that manages the whole person, the whole patient as, as one is very important. And I'm really optimistic that this role will continue to play a very important part in the future. Yeah, me too. And my reflections on this, Jamie Vaughan, are that you established something there and I know it was, you were a real trailblazer. That was hard. <laughs> but through that trailblazing, you set up another route for nurses to progress, for nurses to develop, for nurses to grow, another opportunity. And bringing it back to Florence Nightingale again, Florence Nightingale was all about progression and develop and continuous learning and lifelong learning. It, and she in her turn was a trailblazer there. So I think you've got a few things to say about that as well. Oh, Carol, thank you. There is one very, very special quote of Florence that's very often in my mind, and especially at the moment, with all the opportunities that we have before us that we need to grasp. She said, unless we are working and making progress in our profession and within nursing, every year, every month, every week, every minute, take my word for it, we will be going back. Now, I've always found those words inspiring. We must move forwards. We have enormous opportunities through this pandemic within the digital world of technology, within public health, as we've described, but within the clinical setting as new technologies and therapies and treatments unfold. Nurses need to step up to the plate in a continuing way. And Florence would continue to be really proud of us. So th thank you for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> Dame Yvonne, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for giving us your thoughts and being able to talk about Florence Nightingale on this really special day, but in such a special way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. My pleasure. <laughs>